the options they did? Can you pause on that? Well, this is an abortion clinic. Do you know that? I'm here for a totally different reason. But ma'am, you wouldn't want to give your money to an abortion clinic, would you? I mean, think about it. They kill babies here. You wouldn't want to help support them, would you? Maybe tell me the truth, maybe lying. Maybe that's a lot of stuff. Pregnancy testing. Yeah, pregnancy testing. That's true. Well, folks, today we're out in front of an abortion clinic. And maybe you're a passerby on a local street, or maybe you're like one of these ladies who's sitting inside the clinic. And you may be thinking to yourself, I'm just here to get a pregnancy test. Or maybe you're thinking to yourself, I know I'm pregnant and I want to kill this baby. Or maybe you don't know what you're going to do and you just happen to find yourself today in this particular place in this particular time. Well, I've got something to say to you from the Word of God. And this is a statement out of Psalm 1. And here's what the Word of God says, and I want you to listen to this. I know you can hear me behind those windows, and I want you to listen. Open your ears now and hear the word of God. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. You see, my friends, in life, God sets out a path of blessing for human beings, and God sets out a path of cursing. Jesus described it as two paths. He said one was a broad path that leads to destruction, and another path is a narrow path that leads to life. And I want you to ask yourself a question today, ma'am, as you walk by these other ladies that are here. I want you to ask yourself a question, ma'am. Am I on the path that leads to life? Here you go. What does the path that leads to life look like? It looks like a path of obedience to the will of God. See, if God says to love life, if God says to love and protect your neighbor, and then you go down a path where they slaughter babies or where you lend your support to the slaughter of babies, I want to ask you a question. Do you really believe you're on the path that leads to life? Do you really believe that? Do you really understand, my friends, that if you sit in the seat of scoffers and if you go in the way of sinners, and if you don't delight in the law of the Lord, that's an example of being on the broad path that leads to destruction. Now, we come out here today to warn you. We care about our neighbors. We care about even these unborn little babies that we know are our neighbors. We come out here today to warn you that this path that you're on, if you're involved in any way, shape, or form in the abortion industry, is a path that leads to destruction. How do we know that? Well, the Bible makes very clear, thou shall not murder. That the word of God says very plainly, you are not to murder. And that, of course, is what goes on in an abortion clinic. It's the taking of an innocent human life. Now, I know you may feel you have reasons for this, and, and we're here to discuss those reasons with you. Even God says in his word, come, let us reason together. And so I ask you, while you're sitting in that abortion clinic, come on out here. Come and let us speak to you. We have ladies who would like to speak to you about the preciousness of a baby. We have men who perhaps have been involved in some way, shape, or form in something related to abortion, and we do care about you. We don't want to see you go down a path that leads to destruction. We don't want to see you go down a path where you create a rap sheet against yourself for the day of judgment. Because friends, you have to understand something, God will not be mocked. Whatever men sow, they're going to reap. If men sow to the flesh, they shall from the flesh reap corruption. And if you sow to the spirit, you shall from the spirit reap eternal life. God has told us in his word, he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn that the wicked would repent. That's what that word means, repent, turn, change your mind. If God says it's wrong to murder, if he even says it's wrong to hate somebody, and if you don't extend love even to the unborn, that is an example of being on a path of rebellion against God. 
Now, the truth of the matter is, folks, every single human being who's ever been born was born alienated from the life of God. And only God can reverse that. All men, all women have broken God's law. All men, all women have rebelled against God. All men, all women are starting off on the day you were born on that path to destruction. You've inherited sin from Adam. You want to know why people lie? You want to know why they steal? You want to know why they want to kill babies by abortion? You want to know why they will live sexually immoral lives? Because they want to. The problem of sin is so deeply penetrating into the heart of man that only God can ever free you from it. And that's why we come out here today to testify that Jesus Christ can save lawbreakers. Jesus Christ can save lawbreakers, my friend. Oh, yes, he can. And what he does, my friend, is he points you to his work, his work on the cross for sinners, his work. Oh, ma'am, don't just peek through there. Come out. Come out of that house, that path that leads to death. Come on out, ma'am, where we can reason with you. Jesus Christ shed his precious blood because people like you and I have broken the law of God. Jesus Christ shed his precious blood because God is so good that he's not going to let lawbreakers go. That's how good God is. That's why you're in such danger, my friends, to be involved in the abortion industry. That's why you're in such danger to live a sexually immoral life. That's why you're in such danger if you're a liar or a thief. Because God is perfectly good. And as a perfectly good God, he, of course, intends to execute justice. In fact, the Bible says God's even willing to show his wrath. That that's one of the perfections of God, because God is good. He's even willing to show his wrath. But today is the day of salvation, my friends. Amen. Today's the day to hear and open your ears and hear the word of God. Jesus Christ shed his blood to take a punishment for lawlessness so that lawless people like you, like me, can turn from our sin and come to Christ to be forgiven. Amen. Because God won't negotiate his justice. But my dear friends, our problem goes beyond the bad record. The problem, my friends, goes to the core of your being. You're by nature a lawbreaker. And God has to take out of you your love of sin. And that's why we preach Christ himself. Unless you believe that I am he, Jesus said, you'll die in your sin. Folks, not just your bad record, your bad heart. And Jesus said those that are well don't need a physician. So we come here to this house of death. We come here to this place where you slaughter the unborn. And we say to you, turn from your sin. Turn and embrace the Son of God by faith. Come to Christ. Come to Jesus Christ. He can transform you. He can take out of your heart a love of sin. He can take out of your heart a heart that loves to be sexually immoral. He can take out of your heart a heart that's willing to break the law of God and kill a baby. And he can change you. And he can set your feet on solid ground. And so we call to you as our neighbors. We call to you as people we are concerned about. Come with your sin problem to Jesus Christ. Don't pretend, don't pretend that you can get away with murder. You cannot. God is not going to be mocked, my friends. Whatever men sow, they're going to reap. If you sow to the flesh, if you sow down a path of rebellion, God surely will bring you to justice. He will not be mocked. He's not playing games with lawbreakers. But he calls to lawbreakers, come to me. Come to me. Are you heavy laden with sin? Come to Christ today to be delivered from the power and love of sin. Come to Jesus Christ, my friends. He's the great physician. He can heal you of your disease of sin and free you from your love of lawlessness. And so, my friends, again, I come back to this scripture. You will not be blessed if you sit in the counsel of the wicked. People that say to you, you can get away with murder. People that say to you, you can solve a temporary problem by shedding innocent blood. God will not be mocked. But you can walk in the path 
of counsel. The word of God is forever settled, my friend. Come to me. Come to me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy, Jesus said, and my burden's light. It's not a light burden, my friends, to kill little babies. It's not a light burden to be a drug addict or a drunk. It's not a light burden to be a thief. It's not a light burden to be sexually immoral. It's not a light burden to shed innocent blood. Come to Christ with your sin problem and believe upon him and cry out to him to give you a repentant heart. Cry out to God with that heart of stone and say, Lord, give me a heart of flesh. Take out of my heart that love of lawlessness. Transform me, my king, by the power of your spirit. And so, folks, I want you to come out here. Come on out here. There are ladies who would like to talk to you. There are other Christians who will listen very patiently as you tell them your situation. But there is no justification for the shedding of innocent blood. There's no justification. And the path that leads to lawlessness, my friends, is a path of excuses and rationalizations instead of a path of repentance. Now, sadly, in a place like an abortion clinic, there are people who've made a living, even abortionists make a living from shedding innocent blood. And God calls out to a disobedient people all day long. He did it in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, Noah preached for 120 years. He preached that God is holy and that God is good and that he's surely not going to pardon the wicked who will not repent. And Noah confronted people with their violence and he confronted people with their shedding of innocent blood and he confronted people with their lawlessness. 120 years Noah preached. But nobody wanted to hear the voice of God. Nobody wanted to listen to the voice of God when Noah said, God will not be mocked. When Noah said, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. When Noah called to men and women to repent and turn, and no one listened. In fact, I suspect they mocked. I suspect that they sat in the seat of scoffers and mocked the word of God. And they mocked until the day that God said, I've had enough. I held out my hand all day long to a disobedient people. The word of repentance was preached and they mocked until the day God said, I've had enough. No one could say God wasn't patient. Even that gentleman up here would have to admit that God was patient. Sir, can you hear me up there? God was patient. But even God has an end, my friends, to his patience. And then the day came when God said, Noah, get in the ark. And here is the startling, the, the absolutely trembling thought. Noah, get in the ark. And you know what the Bible says? It says that God shut the door. It doesn't say that the giraffe kicked the door shut. It doesn't say that Noah shut the door. It says that God shut the door. Now, friends, that makes me tremble. Because a day comes, my friends, when God says, shut the door. No longer will he hear the message of repentance. They are turned over to a reprobate status. They've seared their own conscience. They've hardened their own heart. And I've turned them over to their sins. I'll shut a door no man can open. And I can open a door, ma'am, no man can shut. Ma'am, don't shut the blinds. Hear the word of God. Hear the word of God today. God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. You need to flee from this house of wickedness. Choose life, my friends. Don't choose the path of death. God holds your eternal destiny in the palm of his hand. Cry out to him to change you. Cry out to him to free you from your love of sin. Cry out to him to give you a heart that loves these little babies. Cry out to God to give you a compassionate heart that you might give that baby up for adoption. You cannot, you cannot prevail against God. 
And these babies bear the divine image. And these babies were made for God's glory. And these babies are precious to God. And even if this baby is not precious to you, this baby is precious to God, and no one has the right to shed the blood of that baby. And if you harden your heart, and if you stiffen your neck, how do you know today's not the day when God says, I've had enough. I've had enough. I'm going to shut a door that can never be opened again. And you're turned over to your own reprobate status. You're left behind. You're locked out, and you are lost. God has the power to do that, my friends. Tremble. Tremble before the word of God. Ma'am, ma'am, what's the main reason you feel you can't keep this baby? Well, ma'am, this is an abortion clinic, and when you go into an abortion clinic, you're actually lending your moral support to a place that kills babies. Why would you want to do that? Ma'am, why would you want to do that? Yeah, why would you want to lend support to an abortion clinic? If you know they kill babies here, why would you? What, ma'am? Oh, you're going to call the cops? Go ahead. And so that's what happens, my friends is the word of God goes out, the word of God